Welcome back. In the last video, made the drawer system, pretty happy with it. Not finished yet, it needs to be wrapped with carpet. Some stuff's got to be painted. But before I do the carpet, I need to make some kind of wall between the cargo area and where the passengers sit for obvious reasons. This is what I used last time when I made that like cargo shelf thing and I had it mounted about there. I think the problem with it though is I don't want it mounted to the back of the seat. Plus it interferes with the seat belts and would needed to be modified and I'd actually have to set it back a little bit like that and it would restrict space in the back. The only good thing about it is that it's like a cage and while I'm standing out here at the back of the vehicle and my family are behind that cage, it brings back fond memories of me outside the chimp enclosure at Bristol Zoo when I was a kid. Just eating a pack of Doritos, staring them down. So what I'm gonna do is go with this. Now I got this from Orcsbeam a while ago. Um, they sent it with the cube lights that I mounted and I need to thank them for that. Make sure it's not hot, that's no, it's not hot. So, yeah, it's definitely not that hot. So there we go, that is what I'm thinking, and it tucks in real nice. Just bolted to this four mil aluminium plate. Oh yeah, by the way, summer's almost here. All the snow's gone. Whee! Right, the bars are painted and I'm gonna put this in place and loosely hook everything up, see what it's like. I almost got tempted to start drilling holes, but uh, you don't need to hold off. Is uh, really, yeah, just chopping this up. Um, decided I don't like this end piece here. Who likes the end piece? So I've just stitched these up and taken that piece that was one thingy my bob over and put it there. I've knotted that off with a double gimp knot just to make sure if there are any sudden yanks, none of the stitches are gonna come loose. A patent that I capitalized on for a considerable length of time and am missed in the community greatly. The only thing I'll say about it is it's probably not load rated in the same way that that something like legitimate of this build would be. That's it. And it does allow you to push things right back to the seat. So when I do get a larger fridge and it might push against the seat a bit, there's no worry of like any bar work sort of stopping it. It's not gonna interfere with the seat belts and wear them out. I mean, it's functional. And that's what I'm just gonna keep telling myself. But in all fairness, the thing about this sort of bar work that puts me off, right, is the noises they make. And all this is welded, it's not It's not loose. It, it just makes a noise, you know, when, when it hasn't got anything strapped to it, it's doing that sometimes um, with certain speeds of the vehicle, like resonating. So um, that won't do that, basically. And it's just a bit of a simpler design. The only issue being is I can't see back through the vehicle as well, but when it's loaded up, I couldn't anyway, so. Well, I've got some products here that I'm gonna be trying to finish off the draw system with. The carpet just arrived. Got this from carpetmunchers.com. It was a pretty good deal. Now this already has adhesive on it and I bought it like that just to make life easier, but I've got a funny feeling that it's gonna make life a lot harder. Well, I've normally done headliners and things on other vehicles. 
um, and, and kind of relaying fabric, I've always used a 3M spray. Um, and it kind of has a curing time and allows you to pull the fabric back off if you make a mistake and relay it. And you can tweak it quite close to the end to get the proper result. I think when this goes on, it ain't gonna wanna come off. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes, but it is thin, which is also another good thing. I am kind of nervous about this, I'll be honest. I was going to wrap the smaller pieces first and I thought, no, no. I should do this big bit first because the smaller pieces can be painted. My prediction is for this, this is all going to go to shit. And I'm probably going to end up wrapped aligning. <laughs> but these pieces here, I'm going to have to do them separately, like this little bit, and then this can be part of the top piece. It's just too difficult, I just can't, I don't have the skills to make those kind of cuts, you know. Just fold these pieces round, I guess. This is actually a really nice material to work with and it, it just has that stretch in it so that you can just be a bit less kind of uh, accurate, <laughs> which works for me. Um, anyway. Maybe, maybe this won't go as well, I don't know. The adhesive's pretty good though, but when you when you rip the adhesive off, it's, uh, it is curtains, like it doesn't work that well again. So you do have to get it right the first time. I think with this stuff, when it sticks to itself, it is like dog shit. You sort of really want a staple gun to do this sort of job, I think. Just, just you know, for under here. I do have one, but I don't have staples, so I need to go and pick some up. I wouldn't mind just putting a few staples here and there. It's a little, I mean, it is forgiving in a way that like if you sort of like edges and things can be can be kind of like rubbed together. Like that, you see like I didn't do a great job of that. But it could just be like pushed in and I've overlapped that there a little bit and kind of goofed it. Because because it's fabric you just you just get the old fuzz fingers on it. When you build a drawer system like this I think there's always gonna be some negative space. That's kind of why I made these sandwich holders here. But what I'm going to do is to take some of the excess noise out the rear end is just fill the voids with this foam here. It's light and obviously it's not going to touch the bottom of the trunk so it won't absorb water. That's the main thing as well when I wanted to build this. It's kind of like a floating drawer system. So if there is water in the back I don't actually ever have to kind of mop it up. Here we are. It's all finished. There's a few little marked areas and things, but uh, overall it turned out pretty good. Um, so I managed to get the seams relatively okay. It's not brilliant. You can see some marks there. You're not going to see that. Anything you can't see, I don't care about. So obviously it's just going to be like that when you're looking into it. In you go, Jimmy. Just some cold times. Okay, okay. Yeah, the scratch. Do it. Oh. oh, well. Well, I've started to do the inside of the drawer because my thoughts are that it's going to make it quiet when I put stuff in and it won't be rattling around. And also I love bits, like little bits of like grass and dirt and white stuff getting caught in the fabric because people with OCD need something to do. So like my, my thoughts were that because this is like jet black, it's going to show all the dirt and I'll be occupied cleaning it all the time. 
you really have to finger blast this stuff in every corner. Just get it in there, you know. That's very satisfying. There we are. Nah, it doesn't like that carpet. It does not like that carpet. Well, this is sorted actually fixed it up pretty good um the issue was just this draw runner scraping that and, and that's kind of a shame you know if i'd have thought about it better i'd have had a small spacer underneath there between the draw runner and everything but you know hindsight's a wonderful thing i just don't have that much experience building these things and as i said i'm pretty crap with wood but what i'll do is i'll get a i'll clean that up and i'll just use a paint marker um i'll probably use a paint marker and all this stuff it's amazing what paint markers can do actually. I'm actually getting pretty excited about this. That's looking really good. I do still wish I'd used a slightly lighter fabric because I think that the, the dirt build up in the black will piss me off. But um, yeah, I feel like a real big boy overlander now, even though I'm still driving a Cherokee and I probably wouldn't be considered a real overlander because of that. But you can sort of turn up at events now and whoa, what draw system's that? And you'd be like, seen the new ig88 the draw system bolted in place now and uh, before i put all the armor back on i'm just going to paint around here with some undercoat it just sort of stops moisture really creeping in and uh just protects it so i'll switch to handheld mode give you a bit of a show and tell i put some handles on it although they're not engaged as you click that you click that and it pops out and then you pull the handles so it just you know it gives you something to grab onto um, put some little hooks there so you can hang tea towels and the lid for the pots or whatever else I put on these things the ports are in. So these only switch on with the relay and the ignition. So the compressor's down there and you've got an electronics bag just there as well with some cables and things in. Not for the compressor but just general stuff. There's a cable there for the solar panel. And you've also got the engine warmer and diesel heater just there for heating up the tent and the engine and the cab and everything in the winter because that's obviously very important. But the compressor's loose, you can just pull that out, but you could just leave it in there and use it like that and just pull this thing and plug it in, plug the compressor and run the engine and then it's good to go. So I wanted it removable because there's just a few occasions where it's gotten extremely hot and, um, you know, I just it's nice to have these things removable. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's uh, looking pretty smart. Axe and saw just there, which I quite like. And the front runner boat anchors are there for now, but they are going to be swapped out for something much lighter like that. You know, just a bit on the bulky side. But I suppose the only thing really is the fridge, and that is uh, yet to be decided. I've added some openings both sides now, although I need to get some like uh, edging just to sort of tie that off a bit. But um, these things open and you can see a little bit unfinished just there. I'm just waiting for the fabricators to come back to me. They're making some aluminium cutouts for me in about sort of 1.5 2 mil. Just so I'm going to put that on there. So you're going to have an aluminium side and a carpet side. The idea being you can turn it over or you can just open it and put stuff on here slide it over like that access the food and then you know you can work the other side for example if you want the food side left over um, or even turn the whole thing over um, for example it can just be bare aluminium then uh, so like let's say you're working on a part of the jeep that broke because that's just going to happen and uh, you want to put the tools and some things on here you know it just stops the carpet getting trashed one thing I really wanted to do was eliminate the big alu box on the old setup, which contained dry foods and camp gear. So that's all going to be in here now. So there's going to be a lot of dry foods and gas bottles and things. I mean, you can put a lot of different equipment in there. Um, when we go away camping as a family, there's generally a lot of dry foods because we try not to shop too much. 
and this side is obviously camp equipment which has changed a bit actually i'll explain that later i do have some ideas of making some fancy stuff where you pushed on these and they clicked out and opened up um you know so you had a surface there and this could open in a surface but maybe in the future it's still a work in progress with that but i think right now i'm just going to use it and see how it feels kind of like the black mamba but i do have a question for you guys i kind of need some help really on this i've tried searching online i just can't find any information um this is the battery system i use you would have seen me use this over the winter it did perform very well um, operating as low as minus 25 degrees c without error how long it can do that for who knows but it survived um it lives behind the fridge and that's kind of the, the problem with my setup really um it takes up a lot of space when it could be somewhere else in the vehicle like behind or under the rear seats for example where i've made some cutouts where you could have two smaller lithium batteries you know um that's kind of what, what i've seen some other people do anyway but the point being is like it's 27 degrees c here outside in sweden now up in the north it's quite warm like how stable are these batteries in these hot conditions can you leave this in a car um powering the fridge where the air could get quite warm in the vehicle um and go on a hike because this is kind of this the, the thing i do all the time with megan and max we park up we go we go hiking for the day we come back the fridge has been on all day and this has been running you know is that safe to do with this kind of battery technology i've tried to look up the failure rates of, of whether this stuff can set whether they set on fire like how often do they do that and i can't seem to find anything on it i mean i see a lot of stuff about lithium fires and batteries in electric cars but nothing about just general appliances and, and power banks of this size so um you know i'm a bit confused about it really like i've seen these car battery style lithium batteries that a lot of the overland camping rigs use predominantly the guys in australia and the us they have like this car battery it's a lithium battery they sell them here in sweden too um and and they have like a red arc system that's sort of like managing it or some sort of managing system that, that's controlling the battery and they have that in their vehicle and obviously over in some parts of australia and like parts of the us like i see temperatures outside in excess of 40 degrees c plus and they're just happily leaving these batteries in their vehicles and it doesn't seem to be an issue so like is it different technology is it is this thing is this different to a car battery lithium battery style technology it what sort of temperatures can they handle do any of you guys use them do you, are you in temperatures of that in excess of that like 35 40 degrees c like how do you find it so that that's kind of like some of the questions i've been trying to search online and i found no answers to them and I don't want to go on forums because I just I just refuse to do, to do that kind of thing. Um, so uh, if you could help me with that um, and, and like be detailed in the information, like don't hesitate if you have the time, I would massively be appreciative of it um, because it's really confusing me. And uh, and there have been a lot of times where we, we've been away hiking and I've like turned the fridge off and turned this off because I'm scared of, of it like something happening to it. But anyway, um, I think this video has been long enough. Maybe if you could help me out on that last query, I'd appreciate it. Also want to say a big thanks out there to Forest Road Explorer. These are some of the lights that he makes. He makes these amber LED strip lights. I don't know whether he ships all over the world, but I'm pretty sure he ships everywhere in Europe. But you know, you, you can check out his uh, his stuff on his Instagram page. I'll put the link below. Um, I need to find out where I'm going to put these, um, but uh, that will come a bit later when I figure the rest of this electronic system out. So thanks again. And cheers to everyone from Patreon for supporting. Thanks for watching and supporting ever which way you can. I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care. It just won't fit like that. Basically, that isn't that isn't gonna work. It needs to be it needs to be like that, which looks poo.